Derek Jones, the town attorney, and Lisa Mullaney, clerk treasurer. Let's stand and do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes for April 5th, 2016, regular session. Everybody should have had a chance to look at them. Do we have any additions or corrections? to accept the minutes of April 5th, 2017. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Citizens input. Anybody? Anybody got anything? on old business comprehensive plan resolution all right resolution, two, the resolution 2017 dash six there's also a letter right there from the planning commission I what's up a letter from the planning commission over right there under <laughs> Pete DeVos with the Argus Plan Commission. On April 10th, um, we met, had a meeting. Per the state statute, we had a public hearing. Upon closing of that hearing, we had minimal uh, discussion on the comp plan. Everybody thought it looked uh, favorable for the town of Argus. We took it to a vote. It passed 5-0. Um, with that being said, I come before you this, morning, or this evening to give this a favorable recommendation that this board adopts this plan as you have in front of you. Well, most of you do. Here's your last one. Um, you do have the paperwork from the president of the board in your packet there. For if you got any questions, feel free to uh, contact that person. Thank you. Resolution 2017-6 is a resolution of the Argus Town Council approving the Town of Argus 2030 Comprehensive Plan. Approving the Town of Argus 2030 Comprehensive Plan. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, aye. <coughs> yes. <coughs> yes, Jerry. Just a uh, brief comment <coughs> on behalf of MCADC and uh, Michigan uh, Council of uh, uh, Governments. Certainly appreciate all the time and effort from the steering committee. A lot of members uh, are represented by town council of redevelopment and uh, other private citizens came 
uh, and met on a regular basis, put a lot of time and effort into steering this in the right direction. So with regards to that, I think it's important to recognize uh, the town's the community input along the way. And uh, you know, now the plan has been adopted. It's, it's officially your plan. I, I think there's a lot of good elements within the plan. Start off with, with somebody or an organization assigned to implement the plan. That's uh, you know, one of your first short-term goals in terms of planned implementation. So uh, once again, I, I, uh, with respect to the action taken over the last several months, this is probably your first entree into a lot of other programs offered by OCRA. So we wish you well on that. And uh, uh, you're not ahead of the game or you're not behind the game. There are several other communities that are still yet to do their comprehensive plan. So thank you very much for involving us. Thank you and your staff and all the guys from the state. Yes, thank you, Donnie, for your patience with us. <laughs> I would like to uh, second uh, what Jerry mentioned that, you know, MACOG and CDC, now that it's been approved, we'd like to continue to be a better resource to the town, you know, going forward through the implementation process. So continue to use us. Um, we're happy to help the town of Barbas. Thank you all. Thank you. It's a pleasure to working with you through this process, but it's not over. Now it's just beginning. Thank you. to the attorney reform. Okay. <laughs> um, there's a few things. Um, first, just to update you all, I think everybody's aware that we did have scheduled a, a meeting concerning the Speedway gas station. And I'm, so, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say meeting. It was actually a hearing in front of the hearing authority. We all uh, circulated an email. Um, I've contacted Speedway, canceled that hearing. The order has really been complied with. Um, and so there's really nothing more to do with that. Uh, bit of business there regarding that Speedway property. Uh, so we're basically done with that and just put that on the record. So that's officially noted in the town record in the minute. Um, the other item that I just wanted to, again, point out, uh, remind you of is the progress with the, the work on the shell building. Last week, I sent a lease agreement as well as a warranty deed and also a letter that kind of hit the highlights on those matters. Um, I sent that to the council. I sent that to the electric department, which looks like it will actually be the, the tenant or the lessee in this building under the terms of the lease. I sent it to everybody on the redevelopment commission that I had an email address for, um, kind of explaining why things have kind of shifted to looking towards redevelopment and now towards the electric utility. Um, but if anybody has any questions about anything in that lease, about anything set up the way that it was, um, or anything to do with the deed, I'd be happy to answer those questions or give my explanations as to why things are that way. Again, I reiterate that these are not final form documents. Um, I know that I'd sent those to Jerry, uh, MCDC, and their attorney. I sent those on Monday. Um, I've not heard any comments, complaints, criticism, or approvals one way or the other yet, but it's only been a couple of days, so I understand it's going to take some time for them to get through them. But if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to, to answer those now that we, we have a meeting, we can talk about it. Um, if everybody's good with everything, then I'll move on to the next side of business. Okay, I, I read through the lease, there's some things I'd like to see different, but not here tonight. Just to let you know, I didn't send anything back, but there's a few things in there that was kind of different to me, but that's just me, so okay. I'll talk to you about those later. Okay. <clears throat> Next thing is the purchase of the real estate at Colonial Estates. That is set for a closing on Monday, Monday morning at 11, and I'm going to be present at that closing uh, together with the Stevens, and I'm really just letting you folks know where this whole process is at. That should be a uh, taken care of on Monday. Dustin, I'm going to have some documents for you to sign in anticipation of that closing unless you want to show up in person. I didn't know that that would really work out so well with your work schedule. So when is it? It's Monday at 11 in the morning. Okay. But I brought the documents with me that would need to be signed from the title company. Um, and Lisa, I've got to talk to you about 
We're wiring, funds. wiring funds. And also, so that you know, um, at one time we thought that we were going to be borrowing money from the electric cash reserve to finance this acquisition. Um, after talking with uh, Umbo and Lisa again, um, we believe that the simpler and the more efficient way to do this is to simply take this money out of the general fund, um, and specifically the line item or the appropriation, I should say, I'm sorry, regarding the, the old building. Um, so that may have to get replenished at some point, but we're not there yet. But this is definitely the most efficient, best way to handle this transaction according to Humble. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions on any of that? Okay. <clears throat> Folks, the next item that I have are some applications, and this really stems out of our land use and development code. Lisa put together a draft at the last meeting, and I said, hey, can I take a look at that before we do anything with it? Um, I've since gone into that work that Lisa's done, and she's done a, a really good job of putting a lot of the information down as it pertains to especially one of the applications. I'm going to circulate these. These are things, guys, that we've needed to have around to comply with the way the process works in our land use and development code. These are basically the applications if, if a developer would come in and then they were in the light industrial zoning area and they wanted to construct a new building, this is something that needs to be filled out, turned into the town, and basically approved, okay? Um, so I'm gonna circulate one of these to each of you and ultimately asking for your approval. It's my understanding that uh, there are people that are somewhat waiting on these to be able to do not really so much, I don't know if it's a site development, but I've also got the applications for the special use or special exception. And I've also got an application for a variance. Now I've modeled these after the county, yeah, Chuck's still here, so if they look kind of familiar, Chuck, yeah, I played guys into a, <laughs> to a pretty fair amount. Um, it's really the, the basic information that gets to the plan commission or the BZA. There are other documents that are noted on the application that would also need to be submitted. The other thing that I'd like to bring up is that the county charges for these things. And we have no fees listed, um, but we are incurring costs of postage to send out to people, attorney fees, other things that would be involved in rezoning property or site plans, stuff like that. Um, the one that you're looking at there, the site plan, uh, the county charges, they have a $50 filing fee for that. The next one that I'm gonna show you is the application for special exception or special use. There's a $75 filing fee that the county charges for that. And it's, it's not to say that the town has to charge that much or couldn't charge more. Um, but that's kind of the ballpark of, of the fees that people are used to dealing with. There's a $150 filing fee for the uh, a use variance. And, and Lisa's correct, the Land Use Development Code talks about paying an applicable filing fee, but we've never set any fees for filing any of these applications. That's not something we're probably going to tackle tonight. Obviously, these forms aren't addressed to, to identify that. The next set is I'm passing down, and I know that you folks haven't had a chance to look at these. Uh, they may still be a little warm coming out of the copy machine because they just got done this afternoon. <clears throat> That's the application for the special use. And very similar to that one is an application for a variance. Five of those coming down your way.
variance, what did the county charge? Is that 150? I think that was the one that was 150. And special exception? Correct. Application for special use or exception is 75. <coughs> right here that I sent out They're all for special all kinds of letters on and I did the same thing that Derek did <coughs> the county forms and adopted them for us but um, on the one I had to send out this many letters you know so that happened and then on the other ones there were two pages of letters at 46 cents a piece. I mean, I'm not trying to right. nickel and dime here, but it costs us, and then if I have to have Derek look into it, it costs us attorney fees, especially if we're going to change zoning, because that's something that Derek does for us. I think up to this point, Randy and the rest of the council members, I think it's just been kind of, Lisa's maybe had a form put together, or um, when I've done some of these things, um, kind of make our own. Um, it'd really be good to have a form so that when somebody calls, contacts town, at least can say, yep, we got the application for the variance, here it is. Mm -hmm. And it's got basically the information that they need to provide yeah. uh, to get to the BZA and as well as the listing of other information uh, that they need to provide. And there'll be more forms than these. These are just a few of them. Right. Yep. There's about three, three more to do. These are the ones that are probably going to get the most used. So we need a motion to use these forms? I think it would be good at some point that the council adopts some forms. There they are. If you want to make any changes, so be it. But sort of that, there they are. Okay. Um, make a motion to council accept the use of the application for special exemption, uh, the application for variance, and also the, app, the uh, site development plan application has uh, been written uh, as they are right now. A second. Got a motion and a second to accept the forms that our attorney has prepared for us. And they would be the application for spe special exception or use application for variance and site development plan application. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. I suggest in the future we do look into charging a fee. Not tonight. But right. I think that right. Yes. Yeah. I agree too since we have to mail out all the letters. And time. So. Folks, that's all I had for the attorney report. Now, of course, I know a thing or two about a lot of these ordinances that are coming down the, <laughs> the agenda. I make a motion to accept the attorney's report. Second. Got a motion and a second to accept the attorney report. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, board openings, Marshall County Tourism and Planning Commission. Is there one Here missing? Now, Is there one missing there? We're going to be full on. We're going to be full, right? Yeah, they're just not on here. <laughs> I figured you were going to appoint them first. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going. I got a letter here from uh, uh, Edward Barkus expressing his interest to be on the redevelopment commission. Uh, that is. Fine. 
Anybody's interested in that Marshall County tourism, they have I'm probably going to say it's either four or six meetings a year and a Christmas party. They're at 11 o'clock in, in the afternoon is one of the eight hours. 11 o'clock in the afternoon, I'll be there. <laughs> and it's a meal and... I don't know. Did did you, you, got, did, you got a grant from them this year, didn't you? For the, yeah. That's what I thought. I think it's... You're yeah, right. It's four or six on. times I talked to yeah. Jessica Beatty. Yeah. Yeah. To have a meal, you really don't do anything. Yes, yeah, she said that. Well, they're going to send the paperwork's supposed to be sent, the brochure or not brochure, yeah. but a pamphlet on it. I more or less, they're just a voice for us. I talked to yeah, talk, yeah, talk her to her last week. She used to get out. I, didn't get out I, I just want to make sure. Yes. But it, it does. A member it is a good stepping stone to have somebody as a representative. Just three citizen members. More like Mark Cochran. The planning commission account. voted to put Kate right. on the BZA, it so it's your responsibility to actually. So the only other thing I got on the uh, the board openings is um, the planning commission voted to put Pete DeVoe on the BZA. So and that's my appointment. So. I'm now appointing P. DeVoe on the BCA also. Wow. Did you have a say in that? <laughs> so we're all done with that. If you're interested in, let's see, the Planning Commission is full now. So no. we got Marshall. It ain't? No. One, two, three. No, it's not full. It's not full. We got Planning Commission and uh, Marshall County Tourism. So 
submit your letter of interest to Lisa Whitey Portrait. All right. Any other old business? Yes. The fire department came in a while back and asked for the council's blessing on a 50-50 match on getting a washer, uh, dryer, washer, dryer, and um, excuse me, washer extractor and dryer and gas, multi-gas detectors. And we agreed that we would match what was left. Um, the other night, Marshall County Community Foundation uh, awarded us a $6,000 grant. That leaves a balance of $8,103, which the council and the fire department would split at $4,051.50 each. Uh, they got the quotes back. The timeline is all items ordered after the 1st of May. The multi-gas detector should be ready to start training in a couple weeks. The washer extractor and dryer will take two to three weeks to get in, depending on their schedule, but they're hoping to be able to install it the last week of May to the first week of June. We may have a little stumbling block there with the renovations of the building that we're talking about. So we had to have a guideline and everything put out for the grant. I don't even see a problem with them, with the conditions of the building, the timeline being stretched out a little bit. So what the fire department's asking is the council will still go with the $4,051.50 that we pretty much agreed to, but we need to vote on that. And as a liaison of the fireman and the council member, I'm going to make a motion that we go ahead and give them the $4,051.50. I'll second it. Got a motion and a second to go ahead and give for our half of the donation $4,051.50 for the fire department for the wash equipment. And the multi gas detectors. And the multi gas detectors. And again, we'd like to thank the Marsh County Community Foundation for their $6,000 grant. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. They're pushing this cancer thing at the fire department now, from the carcinogen and everything, and, and they're finding out that a lot of this has been caused from years of contamination. So they're really pushing a lot of, a lot of this. There you go. Mandate but no funding. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Any other old business? New business. Ordinance 2017-3. Amendment of Chapter 104. Chapters 104, 106, 104, 108, 104, 109, 104, 111, 104, 116, and 104, 124 of the Argus Town Code concerning the town's water system. This has got to do with tap fees, correct? Tap fees, um, we've also deposits. done the deposits a little bit different and um, reconnects, isn't that in here too? Um, yep. Reconnection fees will be different for after hours versus during hours, and a lot of these changes. In fact, most of these changes were prompted when we did the ordinances that changed the water and sewer rates. Right. And there were some other fees that kind of were tag alongs, if you will. Well, there are are references in other ordinances to those tap fees, those reconnect fees, and, and various other things that need kind of cleaned up because we changed those. Uh, Lisa and Jamie spent a ton of time, I think, going through there and really finding those things. Um, <clears throat> and this is kind of the result of <clears throat> sections of, of the water code, if you will, that need to be changed, updated, uh, brought up to speed because of the, because of the rate ordinance, really. I read this through, so after reading it, I'll make a motion that we 
uh, accept ordinance 2017-3 to amend the chapters of the uh, Argus Town Code concerning the water, water town water system. Well, okay, I suspend the rule. I make a motion that we suspend the rules on all three rulings. A second. Got a motion and a second to suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2017-3 on all three readings. It's an ordinance amending chapters 104, 106, 104, 108, 104, 111, 104, 116, and 104, 124 of the Argus Town Code concerning the town water system. Any further discussion? Yes. Yeah. Yep, Suzanne discovered something that needs to be still updated. Oh. Um, it should say over, um, it's 104-108 on B, down towards the bottom, it should be a period of five years, and those years should be... They should not be percentages, they should be actual dollar amounts. So that needs to be corrected before we can pass that one. Sorry. Can you pass it with those corrections? You can pass it on a first reading. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll redo this. I'll make a motion that we'll pass Ordinance 2017-3, the Argus Town Code concerning the town water system on the first reading, waiting for corrections to be done uh, before the other two is done. So we have a motion and a second to pass Ordinance 2017-3 on the first reading. And it's the Ordinance amending, as the Ordinance the Argus Town Code concerning the town water system, amending all the chapters that I said earlier. <laughs> Any further discussion? And that would be with the corrections made. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. First reading. Yes, question real quick. And, I, and I, I'm not trying to speak out of turn, but we had discussed this not only at Park 4, but it was discussed in a recent redevelopment commission meeting. They're talking about ordinances, and as you update these ordinances, I think, I mean, I think, to, to say the least, there's a lot of duplicate ordinances. There's a lot of mess within our town ordinances. I mean, as far as the, when they were, were even last codified, as far as the um, numbers because you'll find that the park department may have people that numbers of, of Argus Town Council ordinance numbers so it makes it a mess trying to locate specific town ordinances um, whether it be from the park department or whether it be from um, you know the, the town council or water or sewer or whatever you may find you've got you know eight ordinances of 104 or something or whatever but anyway with that being said I don't know what it would cost I don't and I think that the departments that are involved with the ordinances should at least have some sort of uh, buy-in into it. But we on the park board are in the process of, of trying to update our ordinances as well. Um, I know that it's it, it could be very, I, I don't know, very expensive. It could be expensive, but it's I think it's probably something the town needs to do because our ordinances are, are in a mess. I mean, I think Derek will probably agree if he's, as he's going through them looking, I mean, there's a lot of duplicate numbers that are for, you know, all kinds of different things in departments. So, I mean, I don't know what it would take to do that, but I think that we're at a point, we in the park department are, are currently doing it, but I mean, again, all we're going to do is, is update the numbers that are there, which are still duplicate numbers. So, I mean, it's not really taking care of the issue as far as the numbering, it'll take care of the, the uh, relevance or, or the material within the ordinance, but it doesn't take care of the numbering system at all. This entire effort was largely geared because of what you just said. Um, <clears throat> you change one ordinance, and if there's a reference from a 
1998 ordinance, you've got to check those things. Um, the town code hasn't been updated in some time where that's basically the compilation of all of the ordinances. Um, I can't remember, I was here when that was done, but I'm guessing it's been six, seven, eight years ago. That the code was actually, or I'm sorry, that the code was created. Right. Um, and not created, it was updated, put on right. this, but at that point I think there was a pretty good effort made to weed out old stuff. And I think that, I mean, and what I would like to see is that, you know, for instance, if the park department, you know, creates their ordinances or updates their ordinances as they go, we add things or, or delete things that um, the town have some sort of guidance or the town have some sort of system in place that these are the, the code numbers that go to the park, these are the code numbers that go to cemetery, these are the code numbers that go to water, so however. Um, I mean, just so that we're not duplicating or creating the same ordinance number that you're creating and you know if you've got 2000 whatever however you do your ordinances you've got 108 100 you know um, maybe the park will have the same 108 100 in all those departments you can eliminate that by each department having their own specific you know where they're they're going to do ordinances from this is where they come from this is how it's numbered this is how you you move forward from here i mean once it's been up to the word park in front of the ordinance or well i believe the same number and just, that's that's technically what i did with the bza starting this year mm -hmm. since we've restructured the bza and started new um every all of the um, things that are coming across the bza i've put 2017-bza-01 or 2017-bza-02 so i have started to do that I think I'm going to get with you about rewriting the park ordinance for the pavilion, so we'll number that differently. Um, but he's right. What I ran into was, you know, in whoever put these on disk did not check them. You know what I mean? So when you go to find the pavilion ordinance for renting the park pavilion, it just says 2006-1, which was for um, Mammoth. How did I, Tamco, we talked about that So at the last meeting. So I thought it was a town, it was, and it was a park board. So trying to get those all separated out would be a full-time job. And I've talked to Dustin about codification and how expensive it is, but I think that if you get a actual firm that will go through and make sure that if the park board says that this is where it came from, that it backs it up with a copy of that ordinance. Do you see what I'm saying? The minutes or whatever. So. I mean, it'll take. Obviously, it's going to take some research on whoever does it, and I don't think anybody, whether it be you know our board or, or the other boards, really has the time to sit down there and do that research and to make sure it's done properly. Um, the other thing is, in ours, there are some references to to town ordinances that were in place when the town council was in charge of the parks, and they're still being referenced in our current. And I mean, it has nothing to do with the town council now. I mean, in those aspects, I mean, there are still, there, I think, I mean, without, I'm not trying to sound, you know, indignant or, or you know, being sarcastic or whatever, but I think it needs a, an overhaul. I think it needs a, a good, you know, rewriting. I mean, there's, there's ordinances in there I know, but I can remember when I was doing ordinance, you know, code enforcement, there was ordinances in there that didn't even apply. I mean, we don't, we don't even have those situations. Are you volunteering? No, I no. <laughs> no, I <don't. laughs> So Mark and I spent a few weeks going through a lot of those ourselves when he was still on there. If I know what you're saying, but that's about as far as I got. Three people and and there again, that's where I, then that's what I'm saying. I think if you you put that responsibility on you know people in the park board or even you as council council members, I mean that's not you, you don't have the time to do that and 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 not meaning to be you know insulting or anything but you don't have the knowledge necessarily on how that should be organized or, or what's referencing what I think I think it's a little bit more in depth than just looking through yeah yeah change this this and this I mean there's a lot more to it and I think ordinances are a, are a big thing you don't want to have too many but you don't want to have too few but you want to make sure the ones you do have are are relevant and, and easy to to define and, and locate I had Susan from my office go through the park board in the past Two years I believe and it took her a better part of an afternoon to go through all the minutes figure out what minutes she's missing figure out what ordinances we do not have so I have a list for the park board to try to find 
their copy, their signed copies of some ordinances, but you know that took a better part of actually it was like one or two days for her to read through it all and try to find them and and that's only a couple of years so right and, and like Lisa and I talked about you know we talked about it and I said well we got to find everything first and then we got to figure out what what is no good anymore because this trumped it or you know what this don't even refer to anymore just like you said so I mean Lisa and I have been talking about that, and we're also talking about codification, which I was like, what is codification? Because she's just going off and talking about it, but um, it's about making all this stuff electronic. So. I have a, a resolution or uh, making the Marshall County Housing Authority the authority for, right yeah, for all of the town of Argus in a five mile area. Well, come to find out, the Marshall County Housing Authority disbanded in 2013. So now it's called the Warsaw Marshall County Housing Authority. So it's just little things that we're finding as they come up. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. Thank you. We're going to move on. James, he asked him to say something. 2017-6 would be an amendment of Chapter 108 of the Argus Town Code concerning sewers and wastewater discharge. This one basically just upped our tap fees, and it also made it... Um, Jamie went through and um, we don't use clay pipes anymore, right? Is that kind of what you changed in here? Um, no, I think that's still in there. I think if there was something else in there. Lead joints. Did lead joints. Oh, lead but. joints, yeah. It was something that had to be updated. violation change to now it's 50 for any second offense we clear up some confusion on 3406 park violation of park hours the street is open 24 7 correct to go through yeah. but the facilities. The facilities as far as you rooms, <coughs> walking trails, all that stuff, you're not supposed to be on? Technically, no. To okay. But that's part of what we're addressing is that um, in the, the use of the facilities and the hours will be dependent on what the, the facility being used is. 
because we don't want it to, I mean, because a lot of people go out there, if you have it dusted on, I mean, a lot of people go out there before you know, sunrise and walk the, the walk trail, and you don't want to penalize those people, and some like to walk after dark out there, too. Some are afraid to. Uh, so, I mean, those are things that, that have to be addressed. We're, we're kind of struggling with how to address that specifically, but it's facilities themselves are not open the street. I mean, and the whole reason we even opened the street, we even took the, the gate off of the one end was to alleviate some of the 10 and 31 traffic to make it safer for people to drive back and forth and through, so. And we've worked that out with Corey, you know, the cheap bones. You know, <laughs> worked it out with him as far as what the desires and, and the purpose of that ordinance was for. He makes me call him Chief Bone. Good <laughs> motion. I move we suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2017-7 on all three, three readings. Second. Got a motion and a second to suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2017-7. Code enforcement on all three readings. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Ordinance 2017-8. Amendment written payment agreement. An ordinance amending chapter 103.06 on the written payment agreements. This is, is this working, Lisa? Yeah, it's working. Um, this is an amendment to the um, one we did last year. We are now going to charge a $25 service fee for a load limiter contract. Mm -hmm. um, we put together the load limiter so that people would not get disconnected after the 28th day. Um, but we have um, been spending a lot of time putting them on, taking them off on the day after, mm -hmm. which is causing a lot of headaches. Um, but it's forty or it'll be fifty dollars to get your electric shut off, and it'll be twenty five if you enter into a contract. So it's half of the. Right. Cost. So, well, electric water, all of them to be shut off, I should say. The, di the amount of days that they will still have will still be the 15 after the 28th day. Mm -hmm. They will still have till the 15th of the following month that they can drag, you know, or um, take that payment contract out too. So that did not change. We're not altering what we changed last year. We're just adding a fee for the load limiters, basic for the contract itself, because of the amount of time that it's taking to put them on, take them off. Approximately how many people have load limiters per month? Anywhere from 8 to um, 11. Wow. We have 11 load limiters, so um, we've never been under 8 in the past year since we've adopted this. Last month we had 15 shutoffs, complete shutoffs. Yeah. On here, it, it start, this is uh, amending chapter 103.3. 06. Mm -hmm. Down here in the paragraph it says the customer service being disconnected is provided in section 103.04 above. Is that a typo or is that right? Am I just not reading it right? I think that one's okay, Randy. <clears throat> Keep in mind that there's a chapter in the town code that's 
<clears throat> the 100 series, okay? Okay, it looks like that. And 103.04 talks about the notice um, of, the, of the disconnect. And so when 103.06 is kind of cut and pasted into this right. chapter, I think that makes sense. Yeah, okay. In a motion. <coughs> yeah, make a motion we suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2017-8, uh, ordinance amending chapter 103.06 of written payment agreements on all three readings. Second. A motion and a second to suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2017-8 in order to amending chapter 103.06 written payment agreements on all three readings. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And I apologize to the audience, the next two are not on your agendas, but um, they are just two ordinances establishing funds. First one is Ordinance 2017-13. It's an ordinance establishing, establishing the Town of Argus General Donation Fund. Things. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's basically just money. giving you a line to put the money in. Uh, it will be getting for donations. Well, we actually don't need it right now. We're not going to need it for that transaction, but it would be nice to, if in the future somebody agrees to another donation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That okay. it would be done. So Just give us a line for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Through your own ball for a loop, I think, when they realized we didn't have a general donation fund or, or we talked about right. where we would put a donation right. that didn't have any specific intents. That was what they, well, what do we do with that? And so we, <laughs> we have to said, well, hey, we can create a general have donation fund. Many people donating to towns. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this should open the floodgates. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that wants to donate now will have a fund for it? So I need a motion. <laughs> I make the motion to suspend the rules, pass ordinance 2017 13, all three reading. Second. Okay, motion and second to suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2017 13 <laughs> on all three readings. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next one is 2017-4, it's an ordinance. It's an ordinance establishing the Town of Argus Redevelopment Commission Fund. This, this would just be a fund just so you guys kind of understand what this is about. It's a fund just of a general nature for general expenses, general receipts for the Redevelopment Commission. You know, they have TIF money, but there's a lot of strings attached to when, where, and how you can utilize any of those kinds of funds. Um, but if, if they were just to need to be able to spend money to purchase a notepad, they need to have a fund to be able to expense that out of, and they need to have a fund to be able to receive money into um, other than just a TIF fund, which is mm -hmm. been oh, created. But is, that, would that have to, is that a line item then? What is? It's not a line item. It would be its own fund. It would be its, its own, own fund. fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could you put like a percent of what into it? Like, can it be tax money? Can it be utility money? It would have to be funded by the general fund. It could be, we could do a loan like we have, you know, in the past, from one one department to another, that would go in there if it was a loan. Um, but I, I guess 
this would be something that own, would be in our budget. They have their own budget. Well, I guess I'm getting it. Yes. It probably won't. This one may never be used, but it's a possibility. Yeah, if you wanted to give us five hundred dollars a year, like he said, so we could buy pencils, mm -hmm. that's what it would be used. If you wanted them to go to training sessions, that kind of stuff. could be. Or like <laughs> you throw out the example before, like the downtown stuff we did. You'd actually move that money into the redevelopment fund, and they could more or less do all of that, where that took it away from you. So you didn't have to mm -hmm. worry. Make a motion to accept ordinance 2017-14, establishing the Town of Argus Redevelopment Commission Fund. Yes. I don't know for you. Second. The motion is second to suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2017-14, an ordinance establishing the Town of Argus Redevelopment Commission Fund. <coughs> On all three readings. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Carries. Ordinance 2016 15. 2017 15. Is that a typo? 2017 15? Yeah. No, because the other one was 14. Okay, piece of it. On your agenda. On your oh. agenda, it says 2016. That's what I read it off. Oh, sorry. My apologies. It's an ordinance adopting an economic development writer. This is something that IMP is offering now. It's It mirrors the policy we passed, I think it was last year, with a discount over five years, 20%, 15 um, it's a good thing. I mean, there we won't have any cost in it at all. So there's only a couple of stipulations in there. They have to have uh, use a megawatt of power a month and have a million dollar investment. So Jamie and I discussed that we would leave our policy in play for let's say we have a factory that comes in that doesn't meet that megawatt uh, per month. They could still under our policy get a discount for um, the purchase of power. Right. Okay? So, just to clarify. Could you not really get both? They would not get both. Right. right. That's a good thing. They would, if, if they're using a lot of power to get the one, if they're not, then so they can fall back on this little Yeah. Thing. So, Jim, if, if, like, they were going to use a, a, a million watts and they don't do it and they fall just under it, we could still use the town's to help them out. The town can have that tool at their disposal, yes. Okay. I would not recommend doing away with the one that's in our policy, in other words. I would right. keep that policy in play, like but I said. But <clears throat> just remember that comes out of the town yeah. by using ours, you know, so if that might be something we want to look into some more. Right. That, you know, if every other month their, you know, imp is getting in, then it's coming back on us. You know, we, okay. that's not really the goal of this either. Right. <clears throat> does the policy that we currently have, does that have a megawatt in it? No, no. I, I don't think there's any. Okay. It's just new business and... I just said they encourage us to get new business to come in. And yeah, it's it's, it's an attraction. Yeah. Attraction. And it, it gave Jerry the ability to, when he goes to negotiate for, mm -hmm. Um, meeting across from a, a company, Argus does have this policy. And then the newer, the bigger companies, this this info is going to help us take care of the bigger yes. companies and get our air offer based on those. Yes. Okay. Okay. I make a motion that we suspend the rules and pass ordinance number 2017-15 on all three readings. The ordinance adopting an economic development rider. Motion. Second. And a second to suspend the rules and pass ordinance two, ordinance number 2017-15 is an ordinance adopting an economic development writer. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Any other business? 
Go ahead. <laughs> library. Bids for the old library. Um, I gave them to Derek. They are sealed bids. Did yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. No. They just want to know what the guidelines were. Um, I will, before you open that, I received a call from one of the bidders on uh, Good Friday. They didn't realize that Good Friday was the deadline to have the, the bid in. They asked if they could submit their bid on Monday. And I said we weren't in the office on Friday anyway, so that would be perfectly okay. Hope I didn't overstep my bounds, but uh, that's why you have two instead of just having one. To be honest, I don't have, I didn't bring this file with me, so I don't even have that bid spec sheet. Um, don't have that with me anyway. Um, this bid is from Jackson Services received April 13, 2017, 2 p.m. So the scope of work demolished above described building in its entirety. According to specification issued by the town of Argos, remove all debris, uh, some total of $35,000. We've also attached the request for quote, signed by Beverly Jackson. The next one was a bid received April 17, 2017, at 8.58 a.m. from Linker Services, Linker Service Inc. Estimate dated for 1217. Uh, utility is marked located. Demolish, remove existing ability. building. Restore ground is specified in quote. Uh, demo building foundations remove off site to landfill at a cost of $72,160. $72,160. $72,160. They've also provided a copy of the Certificate of Liability Insurance. <laughs> if anybody wants to take a look at the bid. As long as they meet the big requirements. They're, they did attach the Jackson proposal did attach the bid requirements. What appears to be a bit of requirements. Mm -hmm. Does is, is, is Jackson done any work for? He's very reputable. I mean, that's that's what they do. It's so, they tore down a lot of Rochester. They tore down um, the old Cook building in Plymouth, uh, some of the other buildings, right. and, and did a, a very good job. We've had Linker do some stuff here in town too, old houses. Yeah, he did the old house down here, right? Yeah. yeah. As far as the work, it, there, there's no problem with either one as far as the work. Not that I'm aware of. Jackson took down the old co-op one month. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He did a lot of that. Mr. Walker did all that. There's a, there's a small amount of asbestos in that building, too. I, I went through both of them and that. So, so they know they know where it is. They're going to remove it like you talked about. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-five thousand a year. 
They thought too, uh, weather permitting, they could have that done in a couple weeks. So we need a copy of the insurance or before we can. What's the business? charge of that that portion we hired uh, Brad Locke we met him at the last council meeting um, he'll be starting the apprenticeship program in September and he's doing good so far um, contacted control dynamics for the controls with the water and uh, water reservoir um, is for dressing. We're about four weeks out on the fire control panel. Um, been working with uh, some sprinkler companies in um, our area and the fire marshal's office. Um, and that's progressing. Like I said, we're about four weeks out to get the panel in. Then we've got to do some testing. It looks like the um, first part of May. Um, we want to put this to where we have the shortest downtime as possible to do a switch over. So we're going to have to power down our water department, if you will, to do the plug and play and get, get some things switched over. So we'll make sure that the tower is full and uh, we have plenty of water to get that done. 
um, they're anticipating an eight hour day um, to get that done. So barring any catastrophe, um, the residents or factory should not see any, any issue. Just tell us what it is with my departments. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that being said, um, I'm going to turn a portion of this over to Jamie. We have some issues out at the sewer plant that I'd like for him to bring you up to, up to speed on. We got some maintenance issues out there that need addressed. Uh, one of them is the tanks that are inside the aeration tanks. They need sandblasted and painted. We took them down two weeks ago just to check them out. There, there's quite a bit of sludge in the bottom that needs to be pumped out. Um, there's some there's diffusers down in the bottom and piping. Some of those are broke. Well, to get in there, we got to clean it out. So we're gonna have to get a truck in here, get it pumped out. That's looking about twelve thousand dollars to do that. Um, just to haul it away, so that's something we have to pay for anyway. You get a contract to sand blast, yeah. and painting and everything? Yeah. yeah, and I've got some quotes for that, um, <clears throat> kind of like the building tear out. I got a couple different quotes. I had one coming at 90, another one coming at 40, so yeah. It's, it's went in our five-year plan to have that done, inspection and sand blast and, and paint. Uh, another thing that he came up with was cutting some access holes, bolted access panels, if you will, in those aeration tanks. So in the future, if we do have to get in there, it will make it a lot less labor intensive and we don't have to pump up and over the tank that are about 20 feet high. Yeah. Um, the only way to get them now is in a ladder, go up one side of the ladder, down the other side. Well, this, this hatch would be about three foot off the ground so we could open it up, access it there. So, and I've got a quote on that. For both tanks, we're looking at about $5,500. So, you know, last time they cut, they cut into the steel and, and patched it up. So this will save us from doing that in the future. All we have to do is on bolt it, get in there, do what we need to do. So, um, but with that, like I said, I got a quote. I, I called for some references. Got real good references <coughs> in the lower quote. So we're looking at about 40 for that. Another 12 to pump out the sludge. Um, and then for those diffusers. Well, the diffusers, yeah, to replace that, that shouldn't be a lot. We're looking at probably $3,000. Until we get in there and see what's actually broke, we can just see the, <coughs> the uh, air boiling up out of there. We know they're broke. We just don't know how extensive it is until we get it all cleaned out. So, um, And then fabricating those doors on. So, yeah, it's going to be a job. But we're looking at about $60,000 for all that. So. What about the uh, the harness? Yeah, that's that's the next set. Uh, <laughs> but I we got some safety issues over there, and that's one of those in our clarifiers. The only way to access that right now is to climb over the the railing, and you know that's not good. If somebody falls or something, that's gonna be a problem. So we'd like to extend the catwalk in there and put some ladders that go down into the weir. Um, I just called the other day to get some prices on that. They come out and looked at it, but I haven't got the prices back yet. So I don't think it's going to be a real high price. Are we harnessed on up there when you're up there? No. But what, what we're going to do is <coughs> this, will, this will get us down into the weir, and then after that we, we're going to be harnessed in. Yeah, yeah. That way. There's a three foot wall on one side, but the other side there's nothing, so we have to have a lanyard to walk around there as it's clean. Where they're floating. <laughs> Yeah. Is this something they could do one tank one year, one tank the next year, or? Uh, with the aeration tanks inside, uh, we could, but I think part of this price is getting in there, because we're going to have to take one down, clean it, fix it, and then we're going to have to switch over from the other tank. So it's going to be one at a time anyway, but. Um, I would recommend I doing it both, because we, time we, have, one yeah. Yeah, yeah. we have a filamentous problem now. This should take care of that. Yeah. Um, and it should make the next person that um, takes over the plant, he knows how to take it down now, and it should be less maintenance going forward. And when was the last time we... This was 2001, last time we were taking down and, and done this, so... So, it's way past due. Is it in the funds? Yes, it's, so it's built within so our rates. 
Yeah, and we, the sewers got the money to do yeah. it. Yeah, this was in the five-year plan too, so it's kind of. We'll have about three years. We got nothing planned in the way we're going. It's all going to be done at once. <laughs> oh, well, I'll walk. I'll walk. You know, some of these things have been put off. They need taken care of. The other thing we have is the uh, blue tanks out there, the digester and the storage tank. I'd like to put a catwalk between the two. Right now they just have ladders. I got a quote for thirty-five hundred dollars to do that. So. I think that would be a, a real good safety thing too, so we're not climbing up those ladders on both tanks. We can walk across, do what we need to do. So that's that's all I had for that. If you have any questions, where do we go on this? Since it's that amount of money. Okay. For, well, the utilities. It's a utility pay is doing maintenance. Yeah. Okay. So it's sixty. Sixty-five hundred. Um, it would be 60000 for the aeration tanks and to do everything we want to do, put the, um, the, yeah, the manholes, yeah, manholes man inspection, so. same by Is that for two tanks? Yeah, that would be both tanks. And the catwalk? The catwalk would be 3500 for that. That's extra. So now, and this would be in stages. I don't know if this is going to take us a couple months or yeah. it's it's not going to happen overnight. So, because all these things have you know has to be cleaned first, and we got to get in there fix everything. Then they're going to come in and sandblast it. They're doing it all. We're going to do some of it. They're going to sandblast it, paint it. You guys are going to do the plumbing. Yeah, we're going to do the plumbing. After yeah, they're just done a little bit. Okay. I won't know doing that. I'll be supervised. <laughs> From the ground, Dale. From the ground. I got it headed Okay. And like I said, I'm still waiting on that. Um, the clarifiers, the catwalk for that. So once we get that, I'll let you know where we're at. So. I move to let him go ahead and start on the maintenance of the sewer plant. Our second. The motion to second to let Jamie go ahead and start on the maintenance of the sewer plant. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Just all I got. There you go. You got anything else? No. That's enough. Fire. EMS. Fire. Everybody's got the EMS. Fire. Anything you want to say? No. Eat more fish. Huh? Eat more fish. Eat more chicken. Uh, chicken. That's the excellent. Who's here with the EMTs? One of the ambulances had. Oh, you uh, tell about the ambulance. The new ambulance is what about three and a half, four years old. Yeah. Got roughly fourteen thousand miles. We did blow a tire the other day on a run. Uh, we have since. I see they brought it back tonight. It's got six new tires on it. So, you know, as me and Mr. Sneak discussed, you know, what could have caused that 14,000 miles. But you know that, those vehicles sat, who knows where it sat no. before we purchased it. You know, it sat in Hume, Arizona for eight months, just sitting there. It's hard to say, so. And the tires were the tires that it came when they purchased it, so. Yeah, so it's, there'll be an expense there. But. Nothing left no, it's they, they need it. It's a long time, the same spot in that town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a new business to teach up All right, what's your other new business? <coughs> I'd like to uh, get a letter sent out to 405 South Michigan Street to fix up the property. Right. It's that gas station, the little gas station we're talking about. So I don't know what the first process is as far as sending a letter. Is that you? Or me? Well, <laughs> it will be me. <laughs> Our friendly building inspector can get a report. You won't have it until next week sometime. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. <laughs> what was that address again? 405 South Michigan Street. Have to get rid of all that poison ivy out of that. 
The top five claims are as follows. Number one is the Town of Argus payroll number seven for $30,504.30. Claim number two is Country Auto Center for $24,949. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> and then claim number three is the Indiana Department of Revenue corporate tax for $10,447.21. Number four is Indiana Department of Revenue sales tax for $9,328.63. And number five is the Town of Argus monthly sewer transfer at $7,800. For a total of $83,029.14, which represents 68% of the total docket. I move to accept claims 410 through 462. Second. I motion a second to accept claims 410 through 462. All in favor say aye. 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 Make a motion to adjourn the yet. You got something? You're not out of here yet. No. Oh, my right. shit. <laughs> Okay, Chuck came down tonight for specific reasons to go through the EMS building. Fund-wise, there you go. These amounts, do we have to get extra bids, or is this a maintenance item also? What are we talking about here? Renovation, mold redemption on on the EMS that's building. Yeah. That's probably going to be more the public works line. That's not a. I think it's going to be like the library working on that building. Okay. Well, we, we need to move on with this to whether we have other people come in with quotes or bids or however you want to say it. So they need three bids on this also? Well, what's the amount? What are we looking at here? Oh, between 50000 to 60 tops, but somewhere in that area. It's going to be two different people doing the work, right? Well, that uh, yeah. 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 yeah, there's different. Yeah, yeah. good points. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's going to be like stages of that too that will be under a certain amount. So, could what? The number that I'll leave on this. Okay, call me Sorry. and let me know. <laughs> yeah, what it is, where you're at if you've got stuff now, document wise, get it to me. So I can because get that. We need Just to let you. We're kind of on a time frame with this grant money too. I mean, granted, we can push off a little bit and explain to them why, but we'd like to get started on this if we decide to fix the building, which it makes fiscal sense, as Chuck put it, <laughs> versus tearing it down. It needs fixed. I, I get that you mean, and yeah. by the time of the next meeting, we'll have the roadmap laid out of what we got to do. Either that or we can, if you and I get something together, if we got to call a special meeting for an hour and vote on what we want to do, can we do that? Is it got to get done before the next two weeks? I would would help. And where are you? That's what I was going to ask you fund wise. Where are we at since we're at 35,000 on the, we budgeted 150. I know we bought no, some No, we budgeted 125 on the old library. And you're at 
you are buying the property with 60,000, 61,000, call it that. $62,000, let's say. Okay. Okay. So then you're tearing down the old library at 35,000. So you're up whatever you have left. Done. If still, we have to do an additional process. appropriation, then that's what we'll have to do. We still got to go through the process, so I'll get that to Derek and ask the right questions. We'll go from there. And if we got to have a quick meeting for 15 minutes next week. Now, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to second. Yeah, motion to second to adjourn. All jurors say aye. 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 aye.